Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning online. Good morning in house. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 to 16. But how can they call on him to be saved unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. So folks, this morning, as we celebrate together Mission Sunday, missions is not a day, mission is not a Sunday, missions is a life journey. But we take this time to ensure that we focus, that we concentrate, that we are prepared to support in prayer and in resources, in thoughts, in hope, and in aspiration, those who are the feet on mountains that we cannot go. This morning, would you stand with us? And at home, would you stand? Let's praise the Lord together. Father, thank you for beautiful feet around the world that are serving you with gladness of heart despite the situations. So Lord, today we pray that your mighty power will rest upon people around the nations of the world. And together as we worship, we worship on their behalf. We worship alongside them. We send our praises up to the heavens, not only for us, but for everyone who will believe. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our God is a good God. And we're here to worship him him this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Such a good God we serve. Such a good God we serve. He takes care of us every single day. We wake up to his mercies and his goodness. Hallelujah. Yes, we serve a good, good God. And God, we're going to give you today our best praise. Our best praise. Are you ready? We're giving him our best praise today. No holding back. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good and your mercy can do it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy can do it forever. Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good and your mercy can do it forever. He's so good. Lord, you are good and your mercy can do it forever. People from every nation, people from every nation and town, from generation to generation. We worship you, hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are, we worship you, we worship you, hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Lord, you are good and your mercy can do it forever. Lord, you're so, so good. Lord, you are good and your mercy can do it forever. Lord, you are good, yeah. Lord, you are good and your mercy can do it forever. So, so good. Lord, you are good and your mercy can do it forever. From every nation, people from every nation and town, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah! 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 We worship you for who you are. We worship you. We worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. 
That's right. Declare it. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God. One more time, declare it. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are high. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, God, we bless you this morning. We know that you are greater than everything, than anything, than any circumstance that we face. We know you are greater. And we can trust that everything is in your hands. Everything, God, is in your hands. Thank you, Jesus. At the right time When I least expect it Never behind So why Would I be surprised When you deliver Every time On mountain tops You stay the same In valleys low You never change And I believe That I will see The goodness of the Lord Are you confident in that? I'm confident change your faithfulness remains oh 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 we trust in you God hallelujah declare it you go you go before me to prepare a blessing Than I could imagine, more than I could fathom or comprehend. On mountain tops, on mountain tops, you stay. And valleys low, he never changes. Hallelujah. So I. yourself God of my present God of my future you write my story you hold it all together God of my present God of my future you write my story you hold it all God of my present
on this I am confident no matter what the season is no matter what the economy is no matter what the pandemic says his faithfulness remains I believe and I believe that I will see your goodness Lord hallelujah isn't it good to trust in that I'm confident as seasons change, your faithfulness remains, your faithfulness, your faithfulness remains, your faithfulness, your faithfulness. the king of these people you're the lord of this nation you are you're the light in this darkness you're the hope to the hopeless he's the peace to the restless you are declare there is no one like to come greater things are still to be done in this city who else will declare it but we declare it with me greater things have yet to come greater things are still to be done here you're the lord of creation the creator of all things you're the king above all kings you are you're the strength in the weakness you're the love to the broken you're the joy in the sadness he's everything you are there is no one there is no one like
fall and like a who's holding it all together there is no one like our God hallelujah praise the Lord there are times when we sing what we're singing is our testimony there are times when we are in the midst of it all but we can recognize he holds it all together. Today, as we go into prayer, we're going to pray for our missionaries. I want to pray also for those that are struggling, those that are hurting, those that are grieving. Our very dear Lilani lost her dad yesterday, and we want to just pray for the Kula Thungam family. It's good to see Brandon here, and he's lost Linda, and we're glad to see you back in the house, and we join you in prayer and in grieving and in strengthening, and we pray that the peace of God will raise you up. I want to thank all of you for your prayers, and some of you do not know, but my, my nephew last Sunday was in a motorbike accident, and it took his life. But I can tell you something. I don't stand before you as your pastor singing, he holds it all together. I stand before you as your pastor declaring, he holds it all together. One more time. You hold it all together. You hold it all together. time. We come in the sad time. We come in the morning time. We're not, oh God, believers who sit back and, oh God, declare God is not with us. But instead, we stand up and declare, had it not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? If it was not for the strength of the Lord, how would I stand? If it wasn't for the peace of God, how would I rise up? But in the name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, that we as your people would rise up and get to know the peace that pass it all understanding. It is real. It is true. And it is healthy. I pray, oh God, for peace in the hearts of all your people that we would walk in triumph and declare to the world, if you know the Lord your God, you shall stand in the midst of pain and declare, there is no other God. He's the God of the city. He's the God of the nation. You're the God of the world. And this morning, we lay aside our own pain. We lay aside everything that besets us and we declare the Lord is God and there is no one like you. Father, we thank you for those, oh God, who have spent their lives on the mission field. Those in persecuted countries. We pray for the persecuted church today. God, they have gone through so much. They've been stripped. They've been beaten. They've watched their families killed. They've watched their churches burnt. They've watched so much. But oh God, they did not give up. They stood their ground and declare, if I perish, I perish, for the Lord is still God. Father, Lord God, we ask your forgiveness in North America because we fall apart at the slightest thing while the world is in chaos and the nations are raging. But today we declare God of the city, God of the nation, God of our world, rend your glory, rend your power and cause us to triumph that the world will know our God is God. So we give you praise and honor and we pray a blessing upon every persecuted church, every persecuted 
persecuted believer. And may they know today somebody's praying for them. We declare it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory be to God. Well, would you online, would you just chat in the chat line? In-house, would you just look at someone and with your beautiful eyes, greet them and give them just a shoulder touch or something this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Well, this morning, I greet you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And I I just want to thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy and your loving kindness towards uh, those of us that have gone through some seasons, that you have been strong. This morning, I want to just ask, uh, as we prepare, would you just, uh, would you turn your eyes to the screen and watch our announcements this morning? Thank you. Good morning, PPC. I'm Gabe, here's what you need to know. Do you have questions about your faith? Beginners 101 is a course that will help answer those questions. It happens online every Sunday at 7 p.m. Go to our website, ppclife.ca slash beginnings to register today. Family Ministries event, Missions Mania, is happening tonight. Families, join us here at the church at 4.30 p.m. For an exciting evening of worship, games, candy, and much more. Can't wait to see you there. Good morning, PPC. I'm Kendall, and here's what you need to know. We are having a Holy Spirit seminar on Saturday, November 19th at 10 a.m. here at PPC. To register for this seminar, head over to ppclife.ca slash Holy Spirit. Hey, PPC ladies. We have an exciting Christmas dinner planned for you on Saturday, November 26th at 6 p.m. This is an event you won't want to miss with special guests and delicious food. Email info at ppclife.ca to register today. PPC Moms, we have an exciting event just for you. Check out this video. Hey there, PPC Moms. My name is Hermala. Are you an expectant mama like me or do you have little toddlers running around at home? Do you need a little time out? Maybe a little girl talk, maybe a little God talk. I know I sure do. Please join myself and Pastor Liz (laughs) Wednesday mornings this fall from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. starting October 19th for a little mommy and me play and pray group. If you're an expectant mom or you have littles up to the age of four, this is your official invitation to come join us. Stay on your shirt, me too. Haven't showered, who cares? Come on out, join us, have a little encouragement, a little sweet treat, and let's thank the Lord for all the blessings he's given us in this mom life. Come on out. Thanks, Thanks PPC. PPC. This has this been, been what you, you need, to, need know. to know. Amen. We just love having our kids do the announcement. It always just resonates uh, stronger with us. Um, today, uh, we're focusing on missions this week. And next week, we have other guests with us. We have the Thomas from the DR. And then on the 13th, we have a very special guest from Singapore. It will be very different service, and our theme is New Perspective. You do not want to miss any of those weeks. But folks, missions is not about a week. Missions is about a life journey. Missions is about lifetime investment, lifetime commitment, lifetime of prayer. Missions is not a Sunday, although we use this time to highlight, to emphasize so that each of us will take it in personally, that supporting those in who go in prayer means that we must vigilantly do that. It also means that we should go at times to be a support to them on the field, but most of all, that we should all be 
giving as our support so that the work is accomplished. So we have a few uh, folks that we just selected and just asking a basic question. Uh, why have you given financially to support missions and missionaries all of your life? The question is why all of your life? For some people, it's just the one Sunday. We'll give and it's over. But why have you given? So we have with us today Gordon and Sylvia Robinson. Would you tell us the answer, the, your, your perspective to this question? Well, we had a, a, have a great interest in uh, Lusaka, Zambia. Um, the first, the pastors that began our church, uh, it was called Bayview Gospel Temple, and that was um, Mr. and Mrs. Wright. And Alan and Geneva Wright's parents were missionaries, and they spent many, many years in Africa. And when they came to Canada, they came out and they began our very first church in uh, Pickering. Um, so we had a very vested interest to go. Uh, they, they were missionaries, and, uh, but also they pastored our first little church. Um, we, we visited the Village of Hope in Chong Wei, and that is where dear friends of I, Mil, um, ours, Milton and Bev Brown, they had served there uh, for many years, and one year we went there with them. Um, we, sorry, we had our ladies collect socks because we heard they had a great need for socks. And uh, Rachel is here, and she knows, and she collected umpteen socks, and we took them there, and they were very appreciative of them because the children usually just had bare feet. Um, we picked up... Um, when we went to... Uh, sorry. When we went there... We met uh, Nancy and Sergio. Yeah. We actually picked them up, and um, we, we had a, a very good time with them, and we learned so much about just their work there and how hard they worked, and we, we just blessed them. Amen. They, we, we just bless them so much. Um, we went and Gordon did electrical work, and he didn't just bring the light of the world, the word, he brought the light of the world Amen. to many places we have been. And um, Geneva's parents, as I say, were missionaries, and it's just such a blessing. Oh, that's right. I love yes. it. Anyway, um, I could just go on and on with, <laughs> with wonderful stories, but that is it. Hello, my name is Gordon Robinson, and I've been a member of this church for 40 years. And from the first day that I came from the came in the door, it was a, uh, an ache put in my heart for to go on a missions trip. I went on a missions trip to Barbados in Inchmallow, and we built a church. Since then, I have been to Dominico, and we put another layer on the, on the church. I've been to Haiti twice, and we built a, a, a mission house. I've been to Zambia in the village of Hope where we built a, a three-bedroomed, a three-roomed sco three school. And uh, at, the, at the minute, they're building about 14 homes for children who have uh, lost their parents through the, 
the weeds and the grandmothers are looking after them. The children are getting educated, they're getting fed, they're getting taught in, their, in schools. And I think it's a big, big thing on my heart for missions to be given to. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you to the Robinsons. And folks, this is what's, thank you. And what is important is we notice the longevity and the commitment and the heartfelt passion. And we wanted to demonstrate that in simplicity. We're not putting anything on. We just want you to know it's real. And when you get involved, the feeling lasts for a lifetime. Jonathan Kulathungam will be sharing also, just giving us the driving force and motivation in giving. Go back 30 years or so, Youth Convention in Kingston heard a powerful message on Isaiah 6 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. He said, Go and tell the people. Three things happened during that sermon in, when I was about 17 years old. One, Wherever I am placed, I will be a missionary, an ambassador for Christ. I can't go everywhere, but I can support those who can go in prayer and financially. So from that date onwards, made a conscious decision to support those who are going. I will do what I can with what I'm given here, and then support those who have been sent out. And God honors that. I then get married to a spouse who is same mission focused and mission minded. And so it's very easy to continue to run the race that God has placed before you and to do whatever he has given you with whatever he's given, do it to the best of your ability. Amen. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> Folks, at the end of the service, we'll talk a bit more. Those that are online, it's a powerful day that we have lined up. Next week, we also are having a fellowship Sunday. A uh, little bit of a take from our uh, Foods of the World banquet. Have your breakfast, don't come for the Foods of the World. It will just be a take of it. But we will have this beautiful, a beautiful gift for every person that's here. You don't wanna miss it and you're saying, that's a very small box. Remember, good things come in small packages. So we're looking forward to it. Right now, we have one more video. The worship team's going to come in a moment to sing. Would you just show us one more thanks from one of our young members? Good morning, PPC. Uh, my name is Shalini, and I'm just going to speak to you briefly about uh, missions and why I give to missions. Um, so it's to me, it's probably the most important job in the world. Um, spreading the message of the gospel, spreading God's love, um, reaching out, being God's hands extended um, in vulnerable and um, less fortunate communities and countries. Uh, I can't think of anything that's much more important than that. It's literally soul-saving work that these missionaries do um, and life-changing. Uh, I wish I could do it, uh, but I don't have the courage and ability to do it right now. Uh, so I'm just really humbled at the opportunity to help in any way, uh, whether that be financially and in prayer. Um, I think both things are very important. Um, so if you're thinking about giving to missions uh, financially, um, I would just encourage you to pray about it and uh, let the Holy Spirit lead you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Could you stand with us as we sing this morning again? Hallelujah. Isn't God awesome? How he puts all of this together, sending people all over the world and right here in our neighborhoods. God is awesome. So let's sing about that and declare that this morning. Hallelujah. He's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, God, because you're just awesome. Thank you, Lord. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My 
God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken, strength where I've been weakened, forever he will rest. Sing that again. My God is awesome, he can move mountains, keep me in the verses of that song back on the screen for a moment. I want to pivot from them as I introduce our speaker this morning, Kevin and Julia from, uh, uh, Kevin and Julia, and um, I stumble with from because it rolls in the tip of my tongue, from the Restricted Access Nation, 
and now in another restricted access nation, they have learned that God is awesome, that God moves mountains, that God keeps you in the valley, that God hides you in the rain. In fact, uh, 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 Kevin was uh, almost dead. Uh, the churches across Canada, America, UK, all around the nations prayed for him because he was a prisoner for his faith. Uh, he was a political, uh, taken as a political prisoner. And God strengthened, God sustained. Where God gave him strength where he was weak. There were times we got reports that Kevin is almost dead. But this is the dead man walking on our platform this morning. Amen. Thank you. Amen. God Come bless you. Amen. Welcome to PPC, Kevin and Julia. Amen. It's so good to be here. Thank you, Pastor Marie. It's uh, great, great to be in the house of God today. Actually, every day is a good day to be in the house of God, right? Every day. The sad ones, the bad ones, the happy ones, the difficult ones. God just wants to meet us, doesn't he? Always wants to meet us. You, uh, Pastor Marie alluded to our two years in prison. Actually, 775 days. We're not going to tell that story. We were here about four years ago and shared a little bit about that. But uh, we call those two years the bonus years uh, because they were not punishment. They were God's preparation for the next. There were 775 days, yes, of isolation, interrogation, being falsely accused, threatened with execution many times, and finally convicted as a spy. So sorry you have an ex-con speaking to you today. It was painful, incredibly painful. But it was a time where God revealed himself and showed himself to be true because he is. And our hope in Jesus changes everything. It changes what looks black to white. Okay? We never want to relive those two years. You know? Once is enough. We did not get a t-shirt either. But God truly is who he says he is. And he does what he says he will do. That's the word of God. right? And it's true. You can take a look at our book if you want. It's in the, in the lobby. And uh, it tells more of the details of that story. But... Those two years were really just preparation for what God is doing now. Genesis 50 verse 20, when Joshua shared to his brothers, really sets the stage and sums it up. Because he said, you intended to harm me, right? But God, what? He intended it for good. Not just for good, but to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Not only in those two years in prison did God save lives, but he's saving them today where we are based. We are based, and I'm going to share the name, sorry, um, on the border of Thailand and Myanmar. We're about an eight-hour drive north of, of Bangkok. We're in a region that's in conflict right now because of a military coup that occurred a year and a half ago. And, uh, but we see God writing another story, another story of hope that is changing lives because God's love is for the broken. His love is for the orphans and the widows and people in distress. It always is. We live five kilometers from this border. It's a river border. We hear bombs. We see the effects of civil war. We see people fleeing by the thousands, hiding in jungle camps, hiding, crossing the river, and all these things. But you know what? Despite all the suffering, we see God at work. As we did in prison, we saw him at work. Despite the horrendous things we went through, Jesus was and is our living hope. Amen. Right? He is. He is our living hope. Yesterday, today, and forever, he's our living hope. And the people of Myanmar are going through a horrendous season right now. And so we've, God brought us alongside. He prepared us those two years in prison to bring us alongside what he is doing on the border right now. Praise be to God. First Peter, what's the verse? First Peter 1 Peter 1.3 says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into what? A living hope. Not a dead hope, but a living hope. God is giving us, each of us who follow Jesus, a living hope. If you're a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus, you have this living hope inside of you. It's alive. Okay? It is this living hope that kept us through 30 years in China. It is this living hope that kept us through two years in prison. And God made himself known in those days in prison. And this is what we bring today. It's a hope that changes lives. This living hope changes lives. These two years gave us a new perspective and determination, really, that everyone must 
here. Okay? It's not we don't get to choose. Everyone must hear. And God uses us to tell people, right? Each of us, not just us, but you, the us. Online, here, he uses us. We have this hope as a what? An anchor. Okay? An anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And we saw that Jesus was our anchor and is our anchor during those two years in prison and continues to be. We're not in an easy place right now, but God is who he says he is, and he does what he says he will do because he gives us this hope that's a resurrection hope, that's a renewable hope, that is a sustainable and a hope that never, ever fades. Because Jesus does not change, does he? He doesn't. He does not change. I want to give you a brief view of what we're doing right now because pictures are worth a thousand words, so here's a few thousand coming up. It's a brief video. It's not long. You won't need popcorn. Don't worry. Okay? But enjoy this video for a moment. What happens when hope enters hopelessness? Have you ever thought about that? Holy hope. What is holy hope? What is perfect hope? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the first perfect family. No wonder we can't understand the mystery of the Trinity because none of us have a perfect family. A family that is hope from Alpha to Omega. That video just gave you a glimpse of hope going into hopelessness. And what happens when hope, who is Jesus Christ, not a thing, not an it, when hope enters hopelessness, everything changes. It might be a bag of rice, it might be youth vision training, training youth so that they can actually have some sustainable livelihood and walk to maturity with their relationship with Jesus. It might be a family who just dedicated their time to come over for 10 weeks to work with us and they brought a suitcase and when they opened it up, it was full of Frisbees. And they said, could this help? Children playing Frisbee is hope walking into hopelessness, when these children otherwise could be picked up by traffickers, 
Instead, they are brought to safe places. And we are invited. Would you visit? Would you come? Would you help? What are they really asking? What is the neighbor really asking when they said, oh, I love that banana bread you make. Could you just make some for me? It's an invitation to bring hope into their hopelessness. And you may think it's too small a thing, but it's not. It's a huge thing. It's something that's attainable. It's not far off. The word is in us. The promptings of God go into our mind and they say, what about this? And you write it off and say, no, 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 no. And we could have written it off after prison. And many people encouraged us to write it off. Go back there. No, don't. And we're like, what else are we designed for? We are designed to live the fullness of our story on our own. We can't. In Christ, we can In Christ, we can do what otherwise we couldn't do. And so there's a verse, 1 Peter 3.15. And it says, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. That's important. Do you honor him? As Lord, do you say all I do is in Christ? Kevin and I got up this morning and we prayed and we said, with the week we just had, only in Christ can we stand here and share. And then I met your pastor and she had a similar a story of a tragedy that had went on in her life this week. And only in Christ can she stand up and proclaim Jesus is the answer, the way, the truth, and the life. In your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Don't skip that step. Don't run over with banana bread before you do step one. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that is in you, the hope that you have. How often? After 15 discipleship courses? No, always. The day you receive Christ is a good day to start. All right? You can start to share the hope that is in you. That's all we do. That's all we do. We don't do anything special. It's not because we have extra, had extra chances to read the Bible, which has been an incredible blessing because the word is in our heart and in our mind so that we can do it also. But it's not necessary. When Christ came, he said, it's everyone can start immediately. Why? It's in Christ. It's not in you. It's not in me. But once you invite Christ into your life, it's in you. It's in you. The Holy Spirit is alive and well and living in you. Whoa. So you can be five years old and bring hope into hopelessness. Or you can be 95 years old and bring hope into hopelessness. Always give the reason for the hope. You can walk in and not give the reason. But people can feel it first. Why are you so happy? Why are you so joyful? Why do you come back after prison and still do this kind of thing? (laughs) Because I can't live in myself. And I have a message to share with you. I can only live in Christ. And so I know what I have, you can have. If you're in the camp and you're all alone and there's bombs dropping all around, Jesus is there. He's walking around and he's inviting you in every day into this bigger story. And so do you want to walk like that? With him or without him? Why? Give a reason for the hope. Why? Because in hope, because it's a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit hope, there's resurrection in it. There's comforter in it. There's helper, advocate in it. That's the hope that we have. And how do we do it? With gentleness and respect. Right? We don't just barge in to someone else's world without understanding them. We went only in January to full-time live in that area. And we said, okay, we just got to be good listeners. One, to the Holy Spirit. Two, to the word of God and him revealing what to do. And three, to our hosts, to our host nation. If your neighbor is a different culture than you, listen to those hosts. Listen to what they say and how they speak and what they like to eat. Develop your listening skills. Because then when you bring hope in to the situation, 
they open their arms and they hug you and they receive it or they listen or they ask you more questions. So do it with gentleness and respect. Here's an example of a group of children who were completely hopeless in this little village. And they invited us, can you help us? Can you come to our village? Behind it now is a little school, a makeshift school in this little village on squatter land. And I taught them a little rhyme. Nation to nation, friend to friend, hope to hope, hope to hope. My hope can be your hope. And our hope is the hope of our future in heaven. That's the first visit, second, third, fourth visits. Not one child in that place still yet knows Christ because we only started going there. What do you think his plan is for them? What is his plan? Do your one visit and then just leave them alone? No. We might give backpacks that help their bodies, but God is after their souls for eternity. And the next slide here is another school which we had the privilege of going to. You can see it's a, maybe if you look carefully, you can see it's a Buddhist school that was a refuge, became a refuge for some of these children. They just opened their doors and they said, you can, it was actually a monastery, you can use this room to house your children. I went in there the first time. Can you see those blue shirts in the background? People wearing blue shirts. They asked me, is there any chance you could give some clothes to our teachers? I said, sure, we can do that. We can come back with some clothes. This is our first visit. I said, would you like a message on those clothes? <laughs> you see, the Holy Spirit prompts you with these ideas. Headmaster, who is just this one out of five people there, he says, yeah, I'd love a message. I just scribble on a piece of paper. Hope changes lives. That's the introductory message. So now this is the third visit, and they're all standing there with their shirts, and if you saw the back of them, if they turned around, it would say, hope changes lives. You see, God is clothing them first. I never know how he's going to unfold his plan. All I want to do is live in Christ and walk by the Spirit and listen to the prompts and do whatever he says. Sometimes it seems useless. Is that enough? Why didn't I present the whole gospel message on the first visit? What if I can't go back? Don't worry about that. Worry about being in Christ. Think about being in Christ. Letting the Holy Spirit invade your heart and mind and soul. And what I know is those two villages that I just presented have tasted hope. They've tasted of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I was here at one of your missions banquets when we tasted all those foods. Don't come, worry about coming back and just tasting a smaller gift. There's power in things. There's power in a taste. <laughs> And so I was so excited that we could be invited by them to give an answer for the hope that is in us. And I'm going back tomorrow. I'm leaving tomorrow morning, and I'm going back. And I need your prayers. And they need your prayers. But first, I just want to say one last thing. If you haven't tasted hope in a long time, or if you haven't read this and, and just enjoyed the morsels in there, let alone the feast. Do that first. Enter in to the full experience you were designed for. And then go out and put your hope in action. Do you believe it? Those are Buddhist children singing, he's got the whole world in his hands. They're on their way. They're on their way to know Jesus. We got invited to that school and it was amazing. We get invited back and then we get invited back because there's something about this Jesus they don't know and they want to know. We often get asked to do various things. 
One time we were asked, could you help this group of people from an IDP camp, an internally displaced people camp? And uh, so we brought rice and we brought all sorts of things to them. And then as we got there and we're distributing rice and things, says, these, pe these people are desperate. They said, why, why do you do this? Why, why do you help us? So I shared. I shared with them why we do this. It's Jesus. And I asked the whole group, I said, so who have, who's here who's a Christian? One lady shot up her hand. Just one. But she announced to the whole group, I'm a Christian. And now everyone's interested. Right? We get this opportunity. Sometimes aid comes first. Sometimes we get to share Jesus. But it's really all about Jesus, right? When we're taking a bag of rice or whatever we're taking, it's Jesus we're taking, right? We pray over that and we say, God, come and meet these people. It's what, what Mark 9, 41 says. Anyone who gives you a cup of water in Jesus' name. Well, what is a bag of rice going to do? That's amazing. Sometimes we get to invited to share Jesus first. We're invited to this jungle church. I call it the jungle church. You know why? It's in the jungle. That's why. Okay? And I get invited to this church by this pastor who runs a school for 88 children. And this is his, what he does on weekends, partly what he does. And uh, we get invited to this church. And it's, it's really just like your church. It has a roof. It has a floor. Sorry, it doesn't have walls or coffee. But it's got everything else. It's got instruments. You can see, if you look closely, the guy playing guitar there. A little bit out of tune. A little bit smaller than your church. Only eight families of brand new believers. And we get to, to share in this church. But first, they have a testimony day. You know, it's, it's, they're sharing their testimonies. And I'm just awestruck by the faith of these people. And this one girl, you can see her in the pink pajamas in the bottom right corner holding a child. And she shared, you know, I, I woke up one morning this past week, and there was a big snake beside me. So I prayed, and it went away. The snake was probably uh, one of those poisonous ones. What do you call them? I forget the name now. But anyways, it was likely one of those, because those are in the area. And, but she just, you know, her two children, her, she says, in Jesus' name, go away. And it went away. Another man, he's a farm laborer in this same church. And uh, he says, you know, I had to harvest the field for my master, basically the guy he works for. And they make very little money when they're doing this. And he says, but it was the rainy season, and I knew it was going to rain. So I prayed, God, keep the rain over there. Don't let it come here. Well, the rain stayed over there so he could harvest. Because who controls the weather, right? Who controls the weather? Yeah. A couple of weeks later, we decided we'd go back to this church. We didn't tell them. And we just said, we'll bring, we'll bring some rice, we'll bring some oil, we'll bring some canned fish and different things like that. And as I got there, you see the man in the orange shirt. That may be his only shirt. I'm not sure. He just, he, he almost was starting to cry, and he said, we just ran out of rice. Thank you. See, the promptings of the Holy Spirit. It's the promptings of the Holy Spirit that say, we know what's going on, right? And they, these people just walk by faith and not by sight. But that's how we're all supposed to walk, right? As Jesus prompts, we're to walk by faith and not by sight. Whether we're sharing ice cream with some kids in a mountain village, which we did a little while ago. Don't ask me how we did that, because that's a long story, but it was amazing. How <laughs> we share ice cream with this village that's two hours up a mountain and uh, 35 degrees Celsius weather, okay? But we did. But then this lady comes up to us, you see her on the right, and she says, would you pray for me? I have leprosy. And I'm thinking, ooh, leprosy's in the Bible. <laughs> and so we pray. And she starts getting feeling back in her hands. And I say, thank you, Jesus. You know, we prepared ice cream. We didn't prepare prayer, but we did pray. We did pray. Because, you know, Jesus is faithful, right? And we who profess Jesus must believe who he is. And he will do what he says he will do, because he does. My challenge to you, and there's much more we could share about what God is doing on the border. My challenge to you is hold unswervingly to the hope you profess unswervingly. That's what we had to do in prison. No hope. Nothing around us gave us hope, but we held on to Jesus. In this place on the border, we hold on to Jesus because that's the only way. Hold unswervingly to the hope you profess because he who promised it is faithful. Faithful to you, 
faithful to us. And also, let us consider how we may spur one another on to love and good deeds. We're here just to tell you a few stories and to spur you on to what God wants you to do. I don't know what that is, but I know if you pray and ask him, he'll share with you. It might be big. It might be say, ooh, I can't do that. In Jesus, you can, mm. right? We have no life without Jesus. And our responsibility is to share the hope and the life that we have. And as Jesus said, he said, go, right? But he also said, pray, help, give, and go. And that's what we look at. Thank you. We thank God for Kevin and Julian. As you've heard their heart, and there's so much more they could share, but they, they're so full of the Spirit of God, and they call to missions. And today, as you focus on this first weekend, we're so blessed that we could get them because they were on their way out tomorrow, and I was like, we can move the date, so let's do this. But when you listen to Julia's word on hope, doesn't it cause you to feel excited about what you can do? As you listen to Kevin and the things that they're doing and you consider that they're just going with a bag of rice and sometimes you'll say, well, we'll buy the rice and send it. We did a powerful uh, uh, um, demonstration to the food bank here in our city. But for them to accomplish their work, they need the finances because the rice from here to there will cost more. We support Kevin and Julia monthly. We have quite a few missionaries we do the same with and all their stories will cause us to see that if we don't support them monthly, how can they do that work and make a living here when they're not here because God has sent them there and left us here? And I've got another big question. How many of you would want to have the call that God has given them? He's the same God of the universe and he gave them a call that, and a passion for that call. And I am always of the opinion, God, if you would allow them to be in prison two years, kept them alive, and now release them to another place, God, give them many more angels than I have. But God, help me to have the same passion to even support them to do what they are doing in the place where you have sent them. Today, <clears throat> pardon me, I want to remind us that our mission goal, which will go on the screen right now, is 200,000. We have a goal of 200,000, and that's similar to the goal that we've had many other times. It's an achievable goal. It's an easy goal if everyone does their best. We're not asking you just to give a few cents. We're asking you to sacrificially give to the work of many missionaries in many nations around the world. We cannot all go, but we can all give to support those who go. So I want to encourage you. There are many ways to give. You can give online, e-transfer, tithely, but we also have pledge cards Pardon me. We also have pledge cards. And the pledge cards, you've been given it as you came in. And those that are online, you can receive it from us online. You can contact us. And the way that you support every missionary around the world shows your faith in other lives being changed, your passion for other worlds being changed, your investment in those worlds being changed. So as the worship team sings this song, I want you to just ask the Lord in prayer before you give. And you could do it right here in the church. You could do it right online at this moment. Would you just sing this through for us once? And as people just before you even put a number, would you ask God, God, what can I do to support the work of those who will go where I don't ever want to be called to go. 
Would you allow this song to go in your spirit? If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. One more time, if you can use anything. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. This is our surrender. This is our request. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. This morning, I'm going to ask you to purposely consider giving to the work of missions, not just one time, and you can also give one time, but ongoing, weekly, monthly. There's pledge cards that you can use online. You can contact us if you want to make a pledge. But we use that so that we can build a budget so that we can support all the various missionaries. But folks, we've heard from the heart of two that have been called twice into nations that we, not, we do not dare to thread. And we recognize that is a high calling. Not all of us could aspire to even consider that. Today, I want your heart to feel their heart and I want your prayers to strengthen them. And so we're going to ask if you would come and just stand here. Some of our pastors would come and stand behind you, Kevin and Julia. Those online, part of our mission is to pray for those who are in the fire. Uh, Julia, I think it was you that said that snake was a cobra. Is that you that said that? It was, it was a cobra. You don't want to be in a place where you have to contend with a cobra. And I've been in many places like that. I've been in a room when a spitting cobra was outside the door. We, we were stuffing towels under it. And then we realized uh, it can come under the towel. That is nothing. So guess what? Your prayer life changes. That day, we were in Zambia actually, Mother Merle was with me, and that day the dog came. A spitting cobra has 100% precision. And that dog took after the cobra, and the cobra spat in the eyes of the dog and killed it. That dog took what we could have gotten. But it was prayers that made it all come together. Folks, because we don't understand the difficulties does not allow us to stop praying. We pray and God reveals it. We pray and God continues to pour it out. So with the staff, would you come? And Jonathan, would you come back again? Uh, um, Gordon, would you come? And would you just stand together, some of our pastors and those online? Prayer is what makes mission work. Prayer is what makes mission work. And so we want you to be praying. Would you come and stand with us? And those of you that are listening to this message, I don't apologize for pausing and having us pray for our missionaries that are going right now back into that hot spot that we have heard on the news for over two years now. And so I'm going to ask that someone grab a microphone. Jonathan, would you pray? And would you this morning reach your hands out online? Would you just, just put your knees on the ground for a moment and recognize God, you're the same God in Canada that's blessing us. 
And there are people in other nations that need the same blessing. They need deliverance. They need peace. Missions Committee, would you come? And would you just reach your hands out right now and begin to join us in prayer in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, you call them even in times when they didn't even realize it. Father, you had a purpose and a plan and you have taken through it through the fire, but they did not get burnt. You've taken them through waters, but they did not drown because they were called by you. You have given them the spirit of hope to bring hope where there is hopelessness, where there is darkness, they are the light. Father, we thank you for their lives. We thank you for how you have moved in ways we cannot even comprehend. We thank you for your faithfulness that despite the storms around us, they could still have their faith to say, it is well with my soul. Father, we thank you for how you are continuing to use them in a mighty way. Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would guide and direct each and every step. Father, as they take a step of faith, that you would honor that step of faith and you will show them treasures in hidden places, in the dark and nook crannies where there seems to be darkness, you would continue to guide and direct. Let angels walk before them in the north, south, east, and west of them. Let not one dart of Satan come anywhere near them because you they have called by you and they are your ambassadors, Lord. Father, we just thank you for the adventure of faith that you have taken them on and the adventure of faith you will continue to lead them and guide them and direct them. Father, we just could pray for your Holy Spirit to, that whatever they touch, it would be of you and it would be blessed of you and it will be multiplied. Just like those two loaves of fish, mm -hmm. two loaves of uh, fish and the five loaves of bread, Lord. Father, that it will be multiplied beyond our comprehension. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for their lives and we thank you for how they have said, here am I, send me. And Lord, you have honored that step of faith. Father, we just Thank you for their lives, and we just pray that you would continue to build and grow them in the way you want them to be. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Online, thank you for joining us. Please join us next week. There's a gift for everyone. It's going to be a very different service. Please come early. We need uh, some early ones in so we can establish how we are setting up. It's going to be a powerful service. We look forward to seeing you. May God bless you. Give, give, give. Pray, pray, pray. Love, love, love. God is with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.